What up, what up, what up? What up, y'all? It's your boy, Martin, a.k.a. The Boxing Purist. Welcome once again to the Truth and Absolute channel, where I speak the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me. Say it, y'all. Say it, y'all. Good God Almighty. All right, y'all. Welcome back. Happy Saturday to everyone, man. I hope you're having a blessed Saturday. If you had the day off, hope you're enjoying it. If you had to go to work like myself, I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. I hope your work shift was quick, done, over with. Let's get right to this one, man, because there's a couple of things I want to talk about, man. One, could we just, yo, we, we got to give a round of applause to Daniel Dubois, man. That boy, the dog. So it's it, it's hard, right? When the fights happen overseas, like the one today between Anthony Joshua and, and Daniel Dubois, it's kind of rough, man, because we all know we live over here in the States and they're in a whole different time zone. So there's a lot of fights, man. You know how it goes. You're at work and you're trying to look at the phone. You're like... You holler at your boy, yo, what's going on? What's going on? You can't even work cozy because you want to know what's going on. That's what happened today. I checked my phone, man. And let me tell y'all something, man. Let me tell y'all something. I'm at work and my boy from a distance because we're working. He's like, yo, what's up? Joshua by knockout? And I didn't even really think about what, you know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah, yeah, one of those. And then I'm walking away and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know, man. To be honest, at this point, I don't know with Anthony Joshua, man. You know what I'm saying? So whatever, that happened. <laughs> Not even a little moment later, man. I check my phone. I'm on the IG, and what do I see? Joshua got rocked. This is before he actually got dropped, though. And of course, it was in the first round, like Anthony Joshua fashion. On an Anthony Joshua fight, it's crazy, man. A lot of the opposition that he faces, off of the first round, you could kind of tell what's going to happen the rest of the fight, man. So anyways, man... Anthony Joshua ended up getting knocked out, stopped by Daniel Dubois in the fifth round of their fight today in Wembley Stadium in front of a packed house. And I, I, I could honestly say I'm not surprised, man, because we got to keep it real on Anthony Joshua, man. Anthony Joshua seems like a real likable dude. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't really talk trash. He carries himself well. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he stays in shape. He says the right things. He looks, if you don't know the sport of boxing, right? If you don't know what is involved in the sport and you're looking at it from just a physical aspect, you look at Anthony Joshua and think there's no world heavyweight Ever that could beat that guy because of how he's built physically. But we know, because we're boxing fans, that that means absolutely nothing inside the ring. Maybe a little bit of intimidation for your opponent, but besides that, it means absolutely nothing. You know what I'm saying? This is boxing, not bodybuilding. And I'll be real with you guys. When Anthony Joshua was coming up in the Olympics 2012 and all that, he looked like the real deal. He was a strong fighter, you know what I'm saying? He had a good little size to him and all that kind of stuff. And then, of course, we all remember Joshua because he's the one that dethroned Vladimir Klitschko. Now, of course, yeah, Tyson Fury was the first one to beat uh, Vladimir Klitschko. Sorry, guys. But Anthony Joshua is the one that whooped Klitschko to become the champ, you know, to have the belts, to all of that. But after that, Anthony Joshua just kind of, his stock just kept falling little by little by little. We all know he got knocked out by Andy Reese, a fight that he redeemed and looked good doing so, but he should have never got knocked out by Andy Reese in the first time. Not taking nothing away from him, but the shot that he got caught with and all that, he should have been ready for that at that level, right? Obviously, we know that he lost two fights to Usyk, right? And now he lost this fight to Daniel Dubois. And it's always the same thing after a Anthony Joshua fight. You know, I did this. You know, it wasn't successful. I rolled my dice. Like, like what, what do you mean you rolled the dice? Well, what the hell are you talking about? You rolled the dice in this fight and came up short. It ain't supposed to be no rolling the dice, dog. You know what I'm saying? It, the, the wrong terminology. Guess what? You didn't bring the right game plan. You weren't re mentally ready up here. That is what happened. Not, not about no taking no chances, rolling the dice. What's the matter with you, Anthony, man? You're a professional boxer, a billionaire at this point. What do you mean taking a chance? Anyway, man, so got that out the way. Now, this one is one I wanted to talk about because of my video yesterday when I was talking about Terrence Bud Crawford and how I was comparing him and Tank and how I've been really hard on Tank Davis, but I've kind of gave Terrence Crawford a pass, even though their careers, their resumes, how we elevate them, it's almost the same thing. So today, we already knew, man, we already knew, because it's been being talked about, that Tank Davis was going to chase a potential fight with the new guy. I, I, yeah, he got a belt, right? Ryo Valenzuela, the dude that just beat Pitbull Cruz, who gave Pitbull Cruz a boxing lesson, okay? A boxing lesson. 
Pitbull Cruz went into that fight with all the confidence in the world. He gave Tank a great, great fight. Nothing but wins after that. Broke Roley's face damn near. He went in there confident. And guess what? Ryo Valenzuela just had the crib tonight, and he gave it to Pitbull Cruz. And he came out with a great performance, a great win. And if Tank was reaching out to him for a fight, that means that his stock grew quite a bit. But in typical Tank fashion, and I'm going to say typical Tank fashion, right? They send out a contract to Ryle Valenzuela. Ryle Valenzuela sends it right back and denies the contract, denies the fight. But why? Robert Garcia, a well-known trainer, right? A well-known trainer has produced many, many world champions. Him and his family, he's given to the sport between Mikey, Robert, his dad, uh, even Peter, they've given to the sport. Right. He came out and said the reason that Ryo Valenzuela declined the fight is because he's at 140 and Tank was calling for a fight at 135. OK, now this is something that Tank has done a few times and this is the reason for it. Right. And this is an advantage that Tank holds. It's not necessarily his fault. He just naturally holds this advantage. And the advantage that he has is he's always the A-side, so fighters got to come to his level, not him ever go up to their level. You know what I'm saying? So Tank Davis is obviously a really, really, really small guy. Now, we've seen Tank go up in weight in between fights, but not necessarily coming to a natural weight. He's just kind of putting the pounds on. You know, he's not working out. He's not in a camp. He doesn't have to watch his diet, his good, all that. So at Tank, to fight at 135, it's almost like Tank to fight at a natural weight. Not even a natural fighting weight, just a natural weight, which means he doesn't got to kill himself in camp trying to make a weight because he's just that size naturally. So... I don't know if y'all know the sport, and I don't know the sport in debt that great, but if you got any friends that have ever boxed before, that have been affiliated with a professional fighter, an amateur fighter, or have just trained to be a fighter, ask them how much an advantage is that when you're pretty much fighting at your natural, healthy weight. I would assume that it eliminates a lot of the cutting weight in camp. You know, I would assume it eliminates a lot of the hard diets that you got to take in camp. And that balloons into a whole lot of things, you know what I'm saying? Mentally, physically, hell, spiritually, all of those things, it's a huge, huge advantage. Let's just say that. So the fact that he's trying to bring Ryo down to 135, it's like, bro, this is what you catch heat for, Tank Davis. This is why we cannot just get the flowers and hand them to you is because you always look for these little sneaky advantages. He did it to Ryan Garcia. He did it to Mario Barrios. He did it to Leo Santa Cruz, right? If you look up all their weights, the fight that he made them fight at, he either brought them down or the small guys, he brought them up. He didn't just say, let's make the fight. And I'll be real with you guys. I'll be real with y'all. I had a feeling that Tank was going to go after Ryo because in the boxing world, in the minds of some, for Tank to beat Ryo, it's almost like he beat Ryo and Pitbull Cruz because Ryo's the one that beat Pitbull. Right. So I know how he was thinking. And I gave Davis the benefit of the doubt. I said he's going to chase him. And for a guy like Ryo that does not appear to be a big puncher, Tank will fight him at 140. But no, obviously, no, he did not do that. They sent a contract to dude for 135. And, and this is the reason why he does it, man. I'm, I'm going to be real with y'all. Tank is great inside that ring. You want a cool statistic on Tank? Here's a cool statistic on Tank. Tank is a fighter that throws the less punches, the least amount of punches per round of, I think, most pro fighters today. And somehow, Tank has a really, really high um, knockout ratio. I think it's the highest of fighters today. What does that mean? That Tank obviously packs a showstopper in each hand. He obviously knows how to land the punch and get it to its target like a Tank and hit it precise is how he's able to do that. However, we got to look at the opposition. We got to look at the competition on this. So when you're doing that against elite fighters, yo, by all means, hey, I got nothing to say. But when you're doing this against fighters, right, that just are names, not necessarily elite threats to you. When you got fighters that are small and you're bringing them up and fighters that are bigger than you and you're bringing them down, I'm going to be real with y'all. To me, you're not fighting that fighter. You're fighting a reflection of that fighter because you're not fighting them at their best. That's just my opinion, man. Y'all can make what you want with it. That's how I'm looking at it, right? Okay? Example, Leo Santa Cruz, a 122-pounder blown up. You didn't fight the best version of Leo Santa Cruz. You made him blow up. 
Ryan Garcia, and let me just say, Ryan Garcia, Leo Santa Cruz, all these guys that went ahead and signed the contract to get the Tank fight, it's their fault, by all means, for signing the contract. But Tank was still looking for the advantage against them. He obviously did not want to fight them at their best. And you could argue with me. You could say whatever you want. You did not fight them at their best, is what I'm going to say. You know what I'm saying? It, that, that's just what it is. That's just what it is. Anyway, man, so... That's going on in the boxing world. I don't think it's going to be done. If they sent a contract for 135, I'm pretty sure that the next one is going to be 137 and a rehydration clause on top of that for Mr. Ryo Valenzuela. I'll be real with y'all. If I'm Ryo Valenzuela, I don't even pursue the tank fight because that's all you're going to get. That's, that's all you're going to get with Tank. You know what I'm saying? Don't even pursue that. There's a lot of other fights that you could do. 135 to 140 is loaded. Ryo Valenzuela, man, I doubt you'll watch this video. My advice to him, chase everybody else in that division, man, because with Tank Davis, it, it's it's there's a lot of things that you need in order to fight him, and a lot of that is an advantage for him. I sound like a hater. I know I do. Y'all got to remember something, Okay. I'm 37 years old. I've been watching boxing since the early 90s. I grew up watching boxing. The style of fighting today, how quick fighters are giving their fighters, is still brand, brand new to me. Okay? Maybe one day I'll be the same way. I'll get a fighter that knocks out an Uber driver and I'll put him on the pound for pound list like these analysts likes to do. In reality, these analysts are now salesmen. They're not analysts. That's done. But whatever, man. So... Let me know what y'all think about the tank situation, man. Y'all think it's cool to try to bring Ryo Valenzuela, a guy at 140, and bring him down to 135 so that you have an advantage? Did, did y'all, are you guys okay with that? Are you cool with that? Or do y'all think that tank should be like, no, tank is great, tank is this, tank is that. Prove it, right? Prove it, right? You choose to be great. You take risks to be great. Chase greatness, not just what looks like greatness to the casual fans, okay? And now, over to the next side with Anthony Joshua. Should he use his rematch clause to get another shot at Daniel Dubois? Obviously, inside the ring, Joshua's going to say yes. Obviously, in the interviews, he's going to say yes. Do I think he should take that fight? No. Absolutely not. You're just going to end up getting hurt. It's going to be the same result because we all know that Anthony Joshua has a suspect chin, and a freaking book full of excuses that somehow bring them comfort. Anyway, y'all, let me know what y'all think, man. Drop a comment down below. I'll speak to y'all in the next one. Much love. God bless y'all and peace.